Welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, this video, we're going to take a look at um, a couple pieces that I feel have gotten a significant increase, um, a little bit more so than the pieces I showed you uh, earlier, uh, earlier being a previous video. This is what happens when you shoot videos back to back. Um, and this is going to focus on the um, graveyard I recently completed. But um, as much as it is about the graveyard itself, it is about the bases as this um, graveyard now features the upgraded bases now that don't fall through. I'll show you a little bit more about that when we come up to the bench. And it's also going to show the new difficult terrain piece I did recently utilizing the new uh, rock technique that I have been exploring over the series of videos uh, very recently and um, still learning. It's so much. It, and that's kind of what I like about it is that it's got depth to explore. Uh, and that is, I think, the mark of um, quality uh, technique or, or um, possibility, right? It's not something you just master right away and then it's static. It doesn't go anywhere, right? You want something you continuously can tweak and improve and painting these rocks certainly falls under that category. I still haven't uh, gotten to where I'd like to be, but uh, every time I do it, it gets a little bit better. So uh, we're going to take a look at that difficult terrain and then we're going to take a look at one of the um, stony hills that I cast. I finished that recently and I just did some minor changes to that, added some static grass, but you might like taking a look at it. So uh, we'll come over to the workbench and we'll check them out and uh, then we'll come back and wrap it up. So here is a recent graveyard um, that I just completed. And if you um, have followed the channel for a while, you saw me originally introduce these um, disc bases so you can remove these uh, pieces when you want to move um, a large amount of troops into uh, the terrain. Now, the um, thing that was the problem in the past was that the discs would fall through if you picked up the uh, entire base because there there wasn't a rim. So what I've done, and uh, don't don't make fun of me for how um, these were cut and sanded, um, but what I did is I basically have um, cut the masters so that there's a little ridge um, going all the way around it. I used my Dremel with a router tool on it, and uh, but I don't have uh, a way of cutting a perfect circle at this size, so um, it it doesn't look great. But you know. You're not going to see it. And um, then what I did is I then um, sculpted a rim on the inside of the master for each of the circles. And that way now when these sit, um, they sit flush and you can still pick up the entire tray and move it around uh, without them falling. So that I, it's, it looks small in terms of appearance changes for these kinds of bases, but it was a really big improvement and uh, something I probably should have done in the beginning, but I didn't really think about it because I'd never built anything like this before. Um, so um, no major changes to the graveyard except um, a couple aesthetic uh, alterations. I put in um, a couple little shrubs near some of the uh, stones where it could get a little protection. Um, and then I decided that um, these needed a little vine work. So I've used some uh, vines on some of these pieces, including the tree. I decided the tree looked um, fairly plain and I wanted to give it um, a little more interest. So, you know, the vines are growing up the tree, um, give it something um, that, you know, you want to actually look maybe a little bit closer at it. Um, I tried to uh, paint the tree um, with a bit of a color gradation. So a little brighter on the top, a little darker um, coming up from the bottom after I had um, basically um, gave it its wash. And uh, looking at the old photos, I wonder if my old tree uh, that I did on a previous graveyard was actually a little bit darker. Hmm, not too sure about that. In any case, um, that was what I, uh, you know, did for uh, this. And, and I like, actually, the tree has a little cast of, of gray rather than that white in some areas, depending on the lighting. Um, so I, I was pretty pleased about it. A um, couple thoughts on the components. If people are interested in these, uh, maybe for their own train work. These stones, I believe, are from Ren Renendra. Ren if, oh gosh, 
or Renata. I'll tell you what, I'm going to look it up and I'll put the name here. Um, but they sell these on a sprue. Very nice gravestones. Lots of uh, every piece is unique. Um, and then the tree is a Seanscapes. Um, it's their barren tree line. And I believe this is one of the last in existence because they are discontinued. So um, I will not be able to get any more of these. I've been trying for the last several months and they keep saying that they're out of stock. And I checked the main uh, company page and I believe they are discontinued. So I'm going to have to come up with some alternative and maybe it's time I do my, uh, my own trees now and uh, think about that and how maybe I could um, build a, a frame that I could cast and then uh, bend afterwards. Um, well, if I do that, you know we'll come back and take a look at it. Uh, so in any case, that gives you an overview of the graveyard and um, some of the changes I've made. And here you can see um, a relatively significantly improved piece from um, what I had been doing previously. Um, this is a difficult terrain uh, piece. And what I had done in the past was I had cast individual plaster rocks and placed them around uh, the base to give that uneven texture. And um, then I started putting in some um, you know, partial casts of rocks intermixed. Um, using plaster and you know kept getting better and better but since I've been doing the new um, resin cast rocks from the larger molds if you have not seen that video um, you should check it out there uh, then it I gave me an opportunity to really do a completely new base uh, for difficult terrain and uh, this was um, what I came up with um, you know by casting it thin uh, shaving down some areas. I could, you know, set the whole mold basically into the ground, the rock into the ground. I think it gave it a really nice realistic appearance. Um, still learning how to paint these rocks. Uh, I'm trying, this time I really, really aggressively wiped out the, um, uh, oh gosh, uh, tempera paint and to try to brighten the tops so that they wouldn't darken and in the end, uh, they still got dark um, and in fact I thought it looked too red I had too many ochres in here and so I gave the whole thing a wash with a bit of a black wash to mute those colors down and um, I lost a little bit of some of those highlights again but I felt like the color really needed some uh, correction so more learning every time I do it little more learning um, and then um, when it was done I just gave it um, a little wipe with my fingers very very lightly to knock off some of the paint off the tips um, just to pop those corners just a little bit and bring them back to life um, I didn't really want to go over it with a dry brush I'm trying to move away from that as much as possible and force me to learn how to do this painting technique better. Um, I think any other changes? Uh, let's see. First, this is a lot bigger than I was doing before. Um, I think the old difficult terrain bases were probably two thirds this size. But when I did this cast, I loved it so much. I said, I'm going to use it at that size. and I'm going to make some extra space around it. Um, I have accumulated a large selection of static grasses at this point. I don't know. I seem to have a compulsion to add a variety to my stock and I realize I'm not using them very often. So static grass, let's start putting it on stuff. Um, so all these patches are um, put down with um, my uh, static grass stick, the uh, scooter stick, which actually I did a video on. Uh, so we'll go and see if I can find it and I'll put the link there for you. Um, but boy, I felt like that really adds a lot of texture and interest to it um, and it's a lot faster and cheaper than putting individual sill floor tufts down which is what I've been doing typically. Uh, now the sill floor tufts still have their advantage advantages depending on the kind of environment what you want and how easy it is to get in here um, with static grass but in any case for these kinds of uh, uh, opportunities um, the static grass uh, applicator worked really well and again a few flowers um, this is some new uh, dead vegetation ish uh, scrub plants that I picked up a little bit ago and uh, but I didn't want to go too too heavy with the plants and make the um, rock really the focus of the piece so that gives you a look at the newest difficult terrain piece and and um, a little bit about, again, how I went about trying to put this thing together. And just before we wrap up this segment, 
I, I don't know, lint. Um, I just wanted to show you one of the um, rocky hills that I had um, shown previously. Um, I made these a while ago. I made a mold for this. I'm casting these pieces and um, I, I still really like these. Um, you know, of course, now I have some new ideas for rocks, um, but I'm not going to go back and redo these molds. Um, and I just feel really good about them when I, when I work with them um, in terms of their overall appearance. The big change, though, is I um, went in and just put a lot of that static grass on these pieces as well, or on this piece, I should say, and I think that also really um, jazzed it up a bit, if you will. Um, and I painted these rocks, well, last thought just before I go, I painted these in the traditional style that I have been painting them before, which is using um, dirty grays and heavy dry brushing. Um, for those people um, who ask about the colors I use for dry brushing, people ask me frequently, I don't know, it might be in a Q&A. I'm not going to, uh, hmm, I'm not going to look, um, but you might go back. All the Q&As now have annotations or, or descriptions in the bottom about the topics that I cover. I do think it is covered there, but uh, briefly, um, when you use grays to paint rocks, um, make them muddy, um, cut in a little bit of brown, and uh, avoid uh, bright whites, and I think you're going to get a much more realistic color. Don't be afraid to put in some patches with a little color variation, but you can see it's a much different technique than the new uh, rock cast that I'm working with. Um, not to say um, that this isn't good looking. I think still these are um, um, pretty nice for dry brushed rocks actually, uh, but um, it is a different style and it shows the kinds of options that are available depending on the materials and uh, the skill that you have. So. Uh, that gave you a look at those pieces. Hopefully you um, found maybe something that could inspire you if you're interested in doing uh, something similar on your own. Um, and um, hopefully um, you appreciate the um, sort of variations that that rock technique really can take in terms of, you know, vertical surfaces, boulders, um, you know, flat areas, uh, very versatile. Um, so really, I really, uh, I can't say it enough. I'm pretty excited about it probably can tell. And um, I did say I'm going to do an update video very soon. It will probably come out right after this one and we'll kind of give an overview of how things have been going, um, what are the changes going on, um, and some reflections on how things have been going. So uh, hopefully you'll come back and join me for that. And uh, after that, I've got a bunch of reviews to do, some giveaways, um, I, and uh, I have a stack of stuff sitting on this table and I'd like to have this table back and I have a stack of stuff in that corner and I'd like to have that corner back and I have a stack of stuff behind the camera and I'd like that spot back so I'm gonna be back very soon with a bunch of videos so hopefully you'll come back for those and I'll see you again in another Terrence video